Hi guys, welcome to part two of my 2023 Christmas Village full tutorial series. Someone or maybe all of you are thinking that I have switched forever to the dark side of the force and that from now on I will always use only 3D printers for my villages or making my buildings the support of the buildings, the figurines, and all the landscaping. No guys, it's far from that. I simply stated that in 2023, I cannot build a Christmas village without using a 3D printer, or both my 3D printers. Simply, and I repeat this, simply because the market don't have what I need for my Christmas villages and also simply because it will be extremely long and time consuming building everything I need with my bare hands. But I will always continue using my bare hands for other things for most of my Christmas villages. Not entirely, but almost. And I will always continue to use the techniques I've learned during the years. And I will so continue to use this camera here, guys, because I think it is a good addition, this point of view. But, because there is always a but, it seems that one of them is possessed. They are both Sony cameras with Sony sensors, but for some strange reason, I can't have them shooting with the same profile and so there will always be a difference in colors between the two cameras. Please forgive me for that. I was saying I will continue to use my techniques and right now I wanted to use a technique I haven't used for the last five years I think. And let's hope not having forgot how to use this technique. But for what? I want to use this old technique, at least for me. And it is a technique you haven't seen me doing in any way on camera. If you remember last, uh, last week in part one, I've told you that uh, I wasn't satisfied because I had a flat surface delimitating the water, the ocean and the rest of the village. So I want to make the coast, the coastline here with somehow eight centimeters more of uh, eight there. And I will use a technique that is also dangerous because of the tools I will be using for. And I will also use a different kind of panels. Those panels are cheap panels, are styrofoam panels, are expanded styrofoam panels made from little bowls of styrofoam. But the technique, sorry, the technique I want to use, it's not suited for this kind of panels. I need to use extruded styrofoam panels, much more dense, having different dimensions and different colors. They are yellow, eight centimeters, but also much more expensive. One panel having less thickness than 12 centimeters is four times the price of the same panel, but with 12 centimeters in eight. So, <laughs> very very expensive. I will use three or four of them for my project. Uh, and that's a good addition I think because I will prove that I am still capable of using my hands to do something. Very long to do. I will dedicate all this part to, to it. Maybe I will also show you one or two buildings if I have the time to do it. Uh, but first, I need to start reporting on some p 
paper on some craft paper or so uh, called Havana paper, the profile, the perimeter, the shape of the, the coast I've uh, managed to get there with this rope. Uh, because it will be impossible to put the, the other styrofoam panels there and then uh, draw the perimeter. So I will need to report that on some paper, then the paper on top of the new styrofoam panels, then I will start cutting in a strange way. And uh, I will do a mess, guys, because this technique is very messy. I will do a lot of mess, but not in this room, in the other room. Okay guys, some paper here, some craft paper and some little mask tape here. And then I will go, but first I need to move aside there. Anyway, I would have come to that in some minutes. Let's have everything in some other corners like that. Good guys, here we are with the styrofoam panel, the biggest and heaviest and very, very, very impossible to handle it, but here it is. This is a panel of extruded styrofoam. You can appreciate how much dense this is compared to some uh, expanded styrofoam. And I've also the chance that this is from a very recent batch it is inverted, I know, but you can see here 05, 25, 23. So May the 25th, 23. Very recent batch. Uh, so it hasn't been under the sun for a long time. And this is 8 centimeters thick. Okay, 8 centimeters thick there. Almost 8, a little less than 8 centimeters and the dimensions 124.5 so 1 meter 24.5 centimeters almost 1 meter and 25 by 60 centimeters okay so very large piece of styrofoam very expensive okay but I, I will not speak about prices there what else I've told you that this will be a very dangerous task, a very dangerous proceedings, for the reason that I will be using some dangerous tools. First of all, but you have already seen me using it, an old uh, um, soldering gun there, and I've replaced the standard tip, that is this one, for example, standard tip, this is a standard tip, for example, okay, and I replaced it with some copper wire. This is a two millimeter um, in diameter copper wire that I've shaped in different dimensions. This one is the most uh, um, effective. This one, a little less effective, but also very effective. Why I choose the copper instead of uh, iron or aluminum as I used the last season? Because if you take a look to the, to the um, file or a file or a table, 
with all the metals you will see that there are ordered in function of their capacity of conducting electricity and heat it is known that copper can conduct very well electricity in fact inside any uh, all the wires in the world there is a, a copper inside but also it is the second no it is the third uh, pure metal having a good conductivity heat conductivity so first one it is diamond you can believe it but diamond is considered a metal but i'm not here to to make to do a chemistry uh, lesson second one is uh, uh, silver but silver is too soft it will bend very easily the the wire then the third one is yes i'm doing three like that because i'm in europe if you are from us or other countries you may do three like that my bad sorry so this is copper and the third one is copper so very high uh, heat conductivity and the secret here is having the much possible heat passing through the wire and i will use it then i will also use one and two very dangerous guys so i repeat very dangerous be careful if you want to use the same technique i'm using because those are very very sharp knives okay uh, those are kitchen knives not table knives table knives are, may have some uh, so thick on the blade no, these are, those are kitchen, bla kitchen blades, so kitchen knives. More precisely, this is for, um, for uh, vegetables. This is a mix between vegetables and meat. And I will be using this to carve into the styrofoam and make the profile and make the perimeter of the, of the coast. But first, I will use my... Uh, my tool here, my heat tool there. Then I will use, but a little later, um, in three or four hours, those two little tools here that I will explain them later. I will be using them to model something. And then also I will be using This ceramic powder here, guys, you have already seen me using it in many occasions and I will use it to compensate some of the profile. It will be clear in some minutes. If added with a percentage of water, it become uh, like, uh, um, uh, like some gluish uh, mixture that will be able uh, that i will be able to shape in some forms but it is for later and you will understand and i will also use some sandpaper but it's not uh, i'm not here to uh, to teach you what uh, sandpaper is used for nor to show you it right now let's remove some of the dangerous tools because i will start with this tool here but right now not yet first of all i will need to uh, to do the perimeter you remember some minutes ago at least uh, some seconds ago for you uh, a little more for me that i've prepared sorry for the noise okay this little perimeter here and i will use it on top of the styrofoam here i will explain in some let's say in one hour what this will be and i've cut them 124.5 centimeters because this will be used like that and here I've marked also 
this little point here is 15 centimeters so this is corresponding to I don't know if you can see right now no you can't see let me slide this a little more I marked here 15 centimeters so this point here this little point here let me go and have it like that this needs to be placed at 15 centimeters from the edge there so I will measure 15 centimeters like that this will be removed okay from here it will be removed sorry right now we have some reflection but it is the material that it is like that uh, i will surely need to work on the editing in some hours and now uh, we Will I use my cutting table and do a profile like that? No, not, not right now, at least not for the moment, at least not entirely, because uh, I need not to have a perfect vertical wall as a perimeter, okay? Okay, so, guys, my end to get on focus. And here we have the perimeter like that. And I will have less work to do with my tool. Let's have some something to work. Like that. A little thickness, I will remove this. And now I will get my little tool here and I will start working. Okay, good guys, I think it's enough with the perimeter. I can show you what it has become. Okay, it's not uh, vertical, okay? It, sometimes it comes towards the front, sometimes it gets inside, like this one, and I'm still I still need to work on something there. Now, it is time to use those two little things there. And I can show you with a piece here that I have removed. I don't know, maybe it is a piece there. That um, this needs to be very, very step by step, okay? And I will carve into, and I will carve into the styrofoam. And I think I will start from here. And I will make some uh, different shapes and I will go carving and sculpting as I, I feel. And you should do the same. You should do this as you feel. And you sh then should go on.
Good. One hour and a half later. This is halfway through and uh, it's now time for some uh, sandpaper. I'm starting with 180, so very rough uh, sandpaper. And that's the reason why I said some uh, expanded styrofoam couldn't be used, simply because this process here is incompatible with um, expanded styrofoam. And why am I doing this? Because water during the centuries always, do not, always leave rounded corners, never so squared or so um, pointy corners. So Okay guys, I think this will be the first, <clears throat> the first profile, okay, and the first part of the, of the coast. Uh, it will be more clear once I will do the, uh, the final recap, but uh, oh, sorry for the camera. But this from the top would be the profile with all the with all the rocks, with all the cavern, etc. etc. Okay, let me do a fast cleanup here. Oh, by the way, one hour 15 minutes later, one hour and 15 minutes to do all these sandpaper work here. I still need to do a little, a little step, adding here and there some cool thing with my, um, with my uh, ceramic powder and the water, and then I will do the same thing with the other two parts uh, before painting everything. I don't know if I will be able to paint this, but anyway. Let's go. Let's do something with this powder, this white powder, this casting white powder, this ceramic casting white powder. That means that if you mix enough water with this powder, you get a very fluid, almost liquid mix that you can pour into some mold and get whatever form you want. And it, it also has a very quick drying time, half an hour, and the object is cured, if not too deep or too thick. But if you mix less water with the powder, you get something that can be used as a uh, non-fluid, non-liquid, but uh, gooish, almost a gooish mix that can be modeled and then shaped in whatever you want. That's what I will use right now, because here, yes, I have done some of the work. I have give everything the shape almost the shape I wanted with um, curves etc but I miss something else I miss some uh, deepness it is too flat in some points and it's good to have a way to add some more rocks or something like that. And I will use 
these tools to shape everything and my hands will get so messy let's go it is as i said a very white powder okay ceramic powder i will take You need to work in small amounts this because it has a very quick as i said curing time and you risk to get the mix uh, cured before you finished the work i will start let's say uh, from from here let's say I will start from there. I will not use the spoon, but I will add some water. Here is what I wanted and here is the technique I was talking about. So carving, cutting and applying some of the, of the mix of ceramic powder and, um, and water. And then I've modeled with some scissors, as you have seen. Okay, I have different type of scissors like that. And I've modeled. If you pay attention here, you will find, uh, you will notice some holes. They are done in, uh, I've done them express with a little a skewer like that. Because these, is supposed to be submerged by water at some times and so this is like having some uh, coral reef okay this is some corals and um, little uh, underwater life forms drilled those little holes in there okay and so i've applied here the big rock on top and modeled this is also modeled and everything is modeled by water except here it's very rough because it is supposed to be like that this kind of corals remain they are so hard that remain like that very rough uh, surface but the other rocks instead have been modeled as rocks and have been modeled and shaped by the water then by some wind or so okay and this is my way of doing this i could have placed some more rocks all around here but i need the space for the other buildings so here i will have other buildings and i think uh, this is all for this section here i still have two sections 
the, on the left there, uh, here. Especially I have to pay attention here uh, when I will join uh, this side here to the other side because here I will uh, also have the lighthouse in this corner here, okay? This obviously needed to be painted, but here it is, my technique of doing this. You will see it completely done, I hope, in the final recap. Maybe I will show you how I paint it, but it's always the same. Uh, a primer, maybe with my uh, airbrush, okay? Then some black and then some grays, different shades of gray, and then some blue also, some green, some uh, brown. Here, that will be a surprise. A total big mess, I told you, and this is what is left by two layers of airbrush painting and I've used my airbrush to do so. I haven't filmed it for two main reasons. First, the compressor is very noisy. Second, not, not very noisy, a little noisy. And second one, when you airbrush something, you generate a dust, a cloud of dust that will have affected the camera that is no more than 80 centimeters from the top of the table here. Two layers of colors. Initially, the panels was the panel was this yellow there, and I applied some primer that is this gray here, and I only use this primer here from Valeo, and it is a gray primer that I use for my figurines and also for everything else. Not very well distributed because this will be covered by buildings and uh, snow at the end, uh, artificial snow obviously, but I wanted to make this appear um, as much as possible the yellow color. And then I've also airbrushed some, uh, some black light wash, some black wash, very light. It is a mix of black acrylic paint with Mm, a percentage of 10% of acrylic paint and 90% a mix between water, pure water, and an airbrush thinner. It is a diluent and it also is somehow a way to make the mix more fluid. This is why it isn't absolutely black and why I've generated so many waves on the, on the paper there. This is the result. And also what I've uh, um, applied here is uh, very, very, very hard right now. Uh, I'm talking about the mix of uh, ceramic powder and water. Right now, I still have to do some other colors. I could have left these like that. It's too flat like this. I will use some dry brushing technique and I will use some gray and then some other colors, I think. Uh, what I do, I, I generally do like this. Some gray, acrylic gray paint, not too much. Then I get some paper, some kitchen paper or whatever you want. It needs to be absorbent. A very big art brush. Okay, in this case I use uh, big brushes because I have a lot of surface to paint. And I always start with the darkest color. So the, obviously I'm not counting the, the primer there. So black wash then dark gray, then I will go up with some lighter color. And the technique is that, a very light, and then I'm going this way.
Okay. Oof. Long journey, guys. Very long journey. But I think uh, all the layers have been applied correctly, at least for my standards, obviously. So let me clean a little bit this mess and I will end by presenting you one more building, maybe two, I don't know. Another building from the fishing village, guys. This is building G. Uh, sorry, you haven't seen it. This is building G. This is the purple or lila or fuchsia building, guys. Same technique as before. I painted it with brown and then these uh, fuchsia, lila, purple, call it whatever you want. And this will be the tallest of all the buildings. One, two, three, four, five, five levels plus roof. And this time, guys, I will not explain you everything, but I went a little differently with the connecting wires. This will be the plus and the minus, positive and negative, that will bring power to the flickering LED. But you can see here that I went with some JXH connector, 2.54 millimeter, a very tiny connector. I can show you the connectors. Uh, they are used in electronics. So XH 2.54, XH.254, it is J because it is jumper XH 2.54. They come in different sockets and you have seen me using them for my new camera slider, pan and tilt camera slider, and that I use at those connectors. I've used the simply the female and male connector with the two pins, and then I've connected also the wires. Very easily done. You simply need to take a wire and it has a clip inside, and you simply push it there and it is connected. Very simple, I'm not here. If you want, I can make a video about those connectors, but they are very discreet, so not even, you are not even seeing them. And then these will be the positive and negative that will bring the power on top of the building through this wire. It's like this, like this was a column of, uh, electricity, a column of wire up to the roof. Normally I'm getting too close to the camera. Normally it's not like that, but uh, uh, it can be done. And inside I've used uh, many of the T connectors. You have already seen me applying them to the first building, T connectors that will ma which help me uh, connect each and single one of the LED to the main power. I will explain this in a second. Okay, and here I have the wire with the female jumper and I marked the positive obviously is the red one that will be inserted in here like that. Good. Now, Let's connect everything. Positive is, I think, blue. Yes, positive is blue. So let's connect the first one. Then I will do the same thing with the rest. First one, positive is outside, the negative is inside. Okay. And let's try this. If it works. Yeah. 
yes, it works. And first level is done. the fuchsia, the lila, the purple building, okay? A little difficult to show you right now, but guys, this is the tallest one. With so different from the first one, it is supposed to work vertical, so a little problem showing you right now, but this is the tallest one and uh, it is ready to be placed on the layout. Final recap of part two of the 2023 series, the part entirely dedicated to the coastline, but instead I'm showing you the tallest building ever. This little guy here is 39 centimeters tall with is one, two, three, four, five plus roof, six levels. The G building, the purple, fuchsia or lila building, call it whatever you want. Why such a tall building? Because I had in mind the way of living of Vikings, where everything was done in community houses, in uh, cooking, sleeping, working, parting, all in very long and big houses. But instead of crying in the next months because of the lack of space, as I would have used the, the, some long houses, I went vertically. And so this is the same philosophy, but in, other, in another dimension. And you can see even from the distance that the LEDs you have just seen me putting inside are working perfectly. I can show you even from the, the roof there. And the design, the model here, almost the same as the blue building, but instead this one has some little arcs in front of the main door then a balcony that is a closed in, in this case and open balcony here for the blue building then a third level there maybe the kitchen maybe some working space maybe a sleeping area i don't know then another space another another one here so one two three four and five okay here one two, three, four, and five. This is the roof for this little um, level here, but also it is an open space in common with this level here. So each window is a level. One, two, three, four, and then five, fifth level, plus the roof here, sixth. And, and from the front, you can have a good look at what it is having such a big, tall building. And it is the second building I'm showing you. Okay. And I've placed some more supports there and everything is working. Guys, the coastline. You have seen me working intensively on the coastline and there plus the other side will be a surprise not a surprise because i will tell you immediately what i want there i want a sand beach that's why i marked the b on the paper on the craft paper in the very beginning then guys here i added the light house house <laughs> because it's just finished. I just finished painting it and having some wires connected there, you can see, but not yet connected to the main power. That's the reason you have this little hole in there because 
I wanted something that can be integrated in the lighthouse, right? And giving the impression that the lighthouse and the house are one and single piece, and that here you have the entrance directly to the lighthouse where the lighthouse keeper will uh, operate it and work, live, cook, sleep inside the house. And I modeled this house here in some sort of a boat, guys. I can show you from the side here, guys. You can see that it is some sort of, uh, of a Viking boat, of a couple of uh, Viking boats. And from the back here, you have the, the chimney, guys. And uh, this is a lighthouse house, <laughs> the, the uh, lighthouse keeper house modeled in a Viking way, at least for me. And it is good to have it finally there because without the house, this little guy would have been incomplete. And the LED is flashing as it should be voila then the rest of the uh, coastline there with the all the holes with the paintings so i did a primer a gray primer then a black wash a very light black wash then a darker gray light gray brown green uh, and white okay and this is the result also with the big giant rocks I've added and I've tried when carving in the styrofoam to get as close as possible and to have a seam line, a continuity between the two parts, the left and the, and the, and the right. And I also left the little um, rope there to show you that from the original a perimeter the original path I've marked I I went a little uh, different and here another beach guys another big giant beach with maybe the docks the wharf there and so here some more some more uh, sea life and uh, I forgot something guys my bad uh, just a second and i will add something that i've prepared but not yet placed this little guy a giant rock to be placed i don't know in what direction or whatever in plain middle of the water maybe under here maybe in the corner maybe there I don't know yet but this will be uh, some sort of a rock of the uh, of, a, of a reef something like that in plain middle of the water and I've used the, the uh, powder and water this is a piece very heavy because this is very heavy and use the same technique as uh, I've modeled there, but instead I've uh, uh, made a quick mold with some leftover of the cutting parts of the uh, styrofoam panels and then uh, molded it, shaped it, painted it, maybe I will add some more white, I don't know. And uh, this is something else and the rest of the coastline guys and those lines are voluntarily because yes the water uh, flowing vertically but also the waves getting um, against the walls and making the difference maybe this was uh, the tide okay the tide and so even from this side here uh, i have continuity of the uh, coastline and this is the result of part two maybe it's not that good i don't know yet i'm missing so many uh, things like the sand like some vegetation but i hadn't the time to do it and the lighthouse should have been a little more towards the right 
in the plane in the middle of this pointy edge here but like that simply because now I have the house is a little more suited like that uh, I will remove the rope obviously and get everything where it should be once again here some little caves there Mm, this is not the final layout of the buildings guys I have three more buildings three more um, square buildings to show you then I also have four round buildings four cylindrical buildings so these will be a very crowded section okay I was totally worried to have completely forgot this technique after five years of keeping it deeply into a closet but luckily for me it's still there at least in my opinion up to others to judge and I can start planning some other things for this Christmas village now that I'm no more obsessed by the fact of having a flat surface between the water the sea and the rest of the village I can start planning because these guys was absolutely not a planet I decided to go this way no more than three four days ago and I bought everything yesterday or the day before 3d printed buildings 3d printed supports figurines 3d printed lighthouse and lighthouse keeper house can coexist in 2023 with some styrofoam landscaping and made landscaping guys what a surprise sorry guys i'm so damp right now but it was important for me to point out that yes i'm using some massively 3d printers but i also build something by myself hope that you can appreciate the uh, coastline from this view and everything else uh, right now it's still missing some uh, uh, sand beaches uh, some vegetation all the water all the ships the rest of the buildings because they will come the rest of the buildings uh, three more square buildings and uh, four more rounded or cylindrical um, buildings but this entire part was dedicated to the fact that yes i can also make things by myself not just drawing, modeling, and then printing on a 3D printer. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing my once again horrific English. And see you next time for part three, three or three, but only if I haven't bothered you too much. See you guys.